actively involved with the current issues in Syria and Iraq. You met with the President of the United States along with other Christian leaders. Have you received any assurance from our President Barack Obama? Our meeting with uh, Mr. Barack o Obama came uh, during the, an event that took place in Washington which brought Christians together both from America and head head of heads of churches from the Middle East. We have five patriarchs here in Washington to talk about the presence of Christians in the Middle East. Uh, an organization, a new organization called In Defense of Christians invited us to see how we can help Christians stay in their homeland. Our meeting was uh, both, uh, I believe, was both uh, helpful for our people of Middle Eastern origin here in the United States it was also helpful for us to make our voice heard by some U.S. administration officials. The meeting with Mr. Barack Obama um, happened at the White House. Uh, it lasted about 40 minutes with five patriarchs and three bishops representing other patriarchs. And then we continued the meeting with the staff of the president, with the National Security Advisor and others. I believe it was a very important meeting because we had the opportunity to talk to the President of the United States of America, and the, probably the strongest uh, power in the world, and to bring to his attention the plight of Christians and other minorities, and to make him aware of the danger that these uh, groups, terrorist groups in the Middle East, uh, uh, present not only to the Middle East but to the whole world. We did not receive immediate answers to our questions and our concerns, but we felt that the President was listening to us. He was sympathizing with what we were saying. And he told us about his plans to go and strike at ISIS and other groups in Iraq and Syria, which has been happening since then. We are encouraged a little bit by uh, this action by the United States and other uh, European countries, but we believe uh, milita uh, military action alone is not enough. It should be followed or it should be also uh, joined by putting pressure on countries that help fund and arm these terrorist groups. This country should be told to stop funding, giving money and buying oil from ISIS and also stop giving ISIS and others um, military um, equipment, uh, ammunition, and arms. That's the only way to uh, overcome this evil. Let me come to Managara. You're chosen by God, and it's not a coincidence, but the will of God. The same family member, Mor Kurilos Yuyakin, came to Kerala in 1845, 170 years back, to support Managara Church. He dedicated all his life for Managara and died in Managara in 1874. Many similarities between St. Mor Kurilos Bawa and Your Holiness. He was Reish Episcop, your patriarch as well. He was scholar-writer, you as well. He's built many churches in Malangara, among them one of our churches in Fort Cochin and Chalishedi Church. You have spread the gospel all over the world and established many churches in Middle East and America. So much resemblance to our Kurilos Yuyakim Bawa. Your Holiness, how does that feel? Of course, Mor Kurilos Yaqim was a member of my family from my mother's side. We come from the same village called Hibab in Turabdin region of what's today Turkey. Um, I visited his tomb at Molantoriti Church and I, I was always curious about him and about his uh, ministry in India. I read a little bit about him. And I saw, I saw a book, a book that was written, written by, by him personally, personally uh, which was, was kept with kept some uh, members of our distant family. family. And I took that book and made a copy of it. It talks about two things. It talks about uh, our village in uh, back home, Hibab, and then he talks about his journey to Malanka. And uh, it's a fascinating book. I was hoping to prepare it for print, but didn't have time yet. We'll see. 
the journey of Morkorilus Yuyaqim and his ministry in Kerala is part of the efforts of the Holy Church and in particular the Holy Apostolic uh, See of Antioch to uh, not only maintain relationship with our church in Malankara, but also to, to provide service and ministry to our people throughout the world. He was not the only one who went to Malankara, and he was not the last one either. Uh, I believe every bishop in our church has love for Malankara in his heart, and especially the patriarchs, my predecessors, all of them without exception, had always very special place for Malankara in their hearts. It's so unfortunate that the patriarch usually doesn't speak Malayalam, and uh, Many times his message doesn't go across the, right, the way it should. Therefore, there are people, some people who may misinterpret what he says or misunderstand his actions. But I am very sure that majority of our people in Manankara love the patriarch, um, respect the patriarch, and have a very high esteem for him. Not for the person who he is, but more for the position that he holds. And uh, having that special relationship between the Patriarch and the Malankara Church is strengthened usually by the fathers who go from Shima to Malankara to convey the messages of the Patriarch and to meet with the people. Morkorilos was one of them who did his best to serve the church in Malankara. He had to fight with people who wanted to split from the church. He wanted to safeguard the interests of the church there, and he was instrumental in confirming many churches in their faith, uh, maintaining the rela strong relationship with the Holy See of Antioch. And eventually he uh, ended his life, I mean, he passed away where he loved to be in Malankara and his uh, tomb in uh, Mullah Authority Church, I know, uh, is being visited by many people every year. Um, I feel somehow um, heavy burden on me because of that relationship, because I believe people expect from the patriarch who, who is of the same family of the late Morkorilis to be as active and uh, as hardworking as Morkorilis Yaqim in Malankara. And that I cannot do obviously for, for no reason because I'm not there all the time. But my love for Malankara is not less at all than Morkorilis. And I will always work to the best of my ability for the church in Malankara, especially for peace and reconciliation in the church in Malankara. Your Holiness, do you have any family members living in Kerala? I, I know the late Mor Corillos, uh, ha he had a brother, his name was Gabriel, who, who was married to a... Chakuril family. Say it again? Chakuril family. Chakuril family, a Malayali family from our church there. And I know the uh, more Khorilis Yaqim of Martoma Church, the bishop from Martoma Church, who is a descendant of that family. So in a way, we are related uh, <laughs> in that way. But I don't you know of immediate uh, uh, members, or I'm, I'm not really in communication with, uh, with anybody from that family, except the bishop. I met him a couple of times, and uh, I met him when he was here in America also. And we exchange uh, news, and he told me that he has the kappa, the chalice of the late Morkorilos Yaqim with him. Yeah. Your Holiness, what is the plan to visit Malankara? Visiting Malankara obviously is a, is a priority, and I look, uh, I'm very eager to visit Malankara. And we are still working out the plan, the details of the, of the visit. 
which I hope will be around the Maninikara Perunar, um, Feb uh, February. When I go back from the States to Lebanon, um, I expect to receive his Beatitude, the Catholicos, uh, Mor Baselios, Thomas the First, and I'm sure during that visit we will uh, discuss the details of the of the visit to Malankara. All people, Christians, non-Christians, and even government of Kerala, look at you for a peaceful solution. You talk about peace in Malankara repeatedly, especially in your apostolic visit to the American Archdiocese. How can this peace be possible? There is nothing impossible, especially when it comes to uh, to church peace. I know there are hundreds of thousands of peace-loving people in Malankara who love to have peace in the church. And I know there are many people who, have, who are of goodwill towards that. And I believe it's my responsibility to look for peace in Malankara and to work for peace in Malankara. Peace means that everybody should be living and practicing their faith freely and without any problems and commotions. Peace means that when there is death in the family, the family should not be prevented from going to a cemetery and bury their loved one. Peace means when there is a wedding, people should be able to get together in the same church and celebrate. Now that peace happens when there is reconciliation, like every divided community, the first step in peace is reconciliation. We need to have reconciliation in our church in Malankara. This reconciliation comes based on certain understandings. It doesn't happen just because I want peace and then I go and issue a decree saying now there is peace. No. There, are, there is uh, almost a century old division uh, taking, happening in Malankara. And it will not be solved in just one declaration or, uh, or statement. Peace will come when there is agreement between the two divided sides. The patriarch is the spiritual head of both sides. The Patriarch is the spiritual father of all the believers, the faithful in Malankara. And the Patriarch would like to see peace among his children there. But it will, eventually it will be up to the children to get together, to sit together and to reconcile with each other, with the blessing of their father. My plan right now is to keep listening to the people, discussing the issues with our Catholicos, his Beatitude Mar Thomas, Basilius Thomas I, with our Synod in India. And then, when the time comes, when we feel it's the right time, we will initiate a process by which a committee will be sitting together to discuss what kind of peace and reconciliation we'd like to see in Kerala. Now, we are mindful of the many attempts in the past and unfortunately did not succeed or succeeded for a certain time and then failed. We are mindful of that and we don't want to see the uh, reconciliation and unity of 1958 happen again because it only lived for a short time, less, yeah, about 10 years. We would like to see last, lasting peace. And for that, we should really come to a, a degree when there is trust in the middle, when there is uh, confidence, and when no side is afraid of the other. And to, do, to, to arrive at that, there are certain steps that have to be taken. For example, if there is a peace agreement, then all kinds of uh, court cases, lawsuits should be dropped. If there is peace agreement, then there should no parish should be forced to adopt something that a constitution or bylaws that that parish doesn't like. There should be law and order in the church. There should be respect for everybody. And everybody should be able to join the whole church 
So peace and reconciliation doesn't necessarily mean uh, unification, like having one body. It can also it can also mean having two entities, two churches living together side by side uh, in peace and harmony, without fighting and without coercing one into the other. So when we talk about peace and reconciliation, we think we talk about having basically peaceful relationship, being able to. Uh, to participate together. Since there is going to be one faith, uh, anathemas will be removed, excommunication will be removed when there is peace then. Everybody can go to any church to celebrate with the others uh, in terms of times of, uh, of, uh, of happiness and sorrow also. Now we are not discounting and excluding any scenario, but we are not going to force certain scenario also. We'll keep that for the local synods to agree on and we will bless that. But I will, we will not stop and we will not rest until we find some kind of, uh, of, of peaceful resolution to the division in Malankara. Especially uh, we have 2,500 churches all over in Malankara. The dispute is only in about 20 churches. So dispute about the churches is very... Um, I don't want to go into the details of the local churches, but I know that peace means church should not be uh, forced to go to court to defend itself. A, a parish should not be forced to accept something he doesn't want. Of course, there are certain uh, uh, rules and regulations, law and order that everybody should abide by. But uh, to have peace is, as I said, to be able to live peacefully and, and worship peacefully. There was a recent news that Your Holiness would be meeting with Catholicos of the other faction while in America. Is there any fact in this? I made it clear even during my installation speech that the issue of peace in Malankara is a priority for me because I believe it's the will of God that the church should be uh, reconciled and peace and people should enjoy 